you watch any YouTubers? Yeah, you yeah. Watch? We're about to get into that in a sec. It is Night or Die. This is episode six. I believe. Episode six, season four. It's Night or Die. Shorty C94. And tell everybody who you are. Uh, it's Your Instagram name. Chris Estrick. All right. Sneaker, sneaker legend. Yeah, I said it. Whatever. But uh, we're going to get into our main topic for today is our phone posits dead. We're also going to get into right quick what sneaker YouTubers we watch and why. So okay. you want me to go first or you go first? You go first. All right. Um, generally, this, the YouTube channel I watch the most is the Pino E77 one. But he hasn't been updating as much lately. I don't know what's going on or somebody got wind of him having this information. But, I mean, I catch uh, D, the real dark skin, skinny dude, damn D. Damn D. Uh, him. I just watched his. He was in Los <laughs> Angeles recently. Mm -hmm. I watched his. I watched Unbreakable Kicks. Um, but, honestly, the majority of the stuff I watch, it would be either sneaker shopping or it will be some old shit. Like, I watch a lot of Mayor's videos. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And they're from, like, 2015. And even going back when he was a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I'm on my sneaker shit, like yesterday I found a whole bunch of good stuff thrifting. And while I was sitting cleaning it, I'm going to get into that in a bit of two. Um, <laughs> you you got to start letting me know and looking for eights when you are thrifting. Cause I'm always looking for eights because, you know, the wife and, and kid wear that too. But, you know, I'll look for you too. Hey, don't no bad. But it. a lot of just random uh, skip goes hard. Uh, watch some of his videos. Uh, Bullet RC, a couple people, myself, Shorty C ninety four, Chris <laughs> Weathers. My videos never come out like I shoot them, but you know, whatever. See, what about I, you? I watch Damn D because he's hilarious to me. Uh, the majority of the time, I'm watching. Uh, like. Oh, I watch Unbreakable Kicks. I do watch Unbreakable Kicks a little bit. But I watch uh, Mike Rich. The majority of the time, I'm watching Mike Rich videos. The kind of the, the Southern dude? Yeah. Yeah, I've Southern seen some of his, too. Yeah, I watch him. Because uh, one video I watched, he had went to a Nike outlet. Outlet, yeah. And there was another one where he went into, like, a Marshalls or a TJ Maxx. And they had some shattered backboards in there, but they weren't real. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that come to mind... Just right quick. See, I like him because he goes. He will go. Uh, he will go to the Marshalls. He do a lot of outlet shopping, and he goes to the malls and he do the pickups and the, you know, the on foot. So he do a little bit of everything. So I watch him a lot. The majority of the time, I'm watching him. Yeah. Trying to get trying to get Dave to Snicker Dave to do some more videos because I love his videos. Yeah. That he used to put up. And that dude has so much, man. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, the, the YouTube thing, and, and then, you know, I want your opinion on this before we get into our main topic. How do you feel that social media has affected the, I hate to call it the sneaker game because it's not a game to me. It's more of a lifestyle. But, like, how do you think it's affected? I think it's killing it. Only because it's it's swaying sneakerheads or potential sneakerheads or junior sneakerheads, whatever, however you look at it, they're pretty much going with what they see, you know, and, and on other people's opinions and not on stuff that they see that they may like. So it's like it's killing shoes, which is better for me because I like the different the different shoes. I'm not really into I, I'll I'll take the non-commercial shoe or the non-hype shoe. So these more for me, but it's a lot of shoes out here that I believe should do a lot better than they do, but because they're not hyped, they don't do very well. Okay. Because of YouTubers. I do agree. I feel like um kinda of like Instagram can make or break a shoe. Yes. YouTube can make or break a shoe. Um It's also questionable when I see people YouTube what their true intentions are. Like, anybody who knows me, like, I've been in the sneakers since I was a little kid. Like, I've always liked shoes and I've wanted to look 
cool but different at the same time where, all right, I might wear a Jordan today, but tomorrow I might wear this random fila and nobody going to have. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, what have you. Um, a lot of people, you know, get monetary. And there's no, nothing wrong with making money off the shoe game, but what are your true intentions? It's sort of like how people used to say when we were younger, the song is only played because they paid the DJ, you right. know, to like pay Funk Master Flex to put a bomb on it, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Are the companies doing that with these sneaker YouTubers to push said shoes? When I'm doing my reviews, I'm talking like I'm talking to anybody I know what I like about the shoe. I could be talking to you or my boy Ant or whoever, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like this shoe is raw because of this. It's not raw because of this, you know. I mean, that's that's I I agree because I I want to know your honest opinion, and I if you don't like a shoe, just say you don't like it, and I want you to be able to say you, you like it without losing sponsorship or worried about losing sponsorship. Yeah. On on YouTube, and that's that's one of my biggest things. Yeah, because I mean, like when I put up the video that I did for those those ones, the green ones that are coming out later this month. <laughs> they are. They are. People were asking me if they were authentic and how did I have them and all that. And I didn't really want to get into mm-hmm. all of that because it's people watching. Um, people watching the people watching. So, you know, but, um, you know, I've been questioning her, am I getting money for this? You know, whatever. And I'm not. Nah. That'd be nice, but nah. you got to endorse shoes that you like. Gotta show shoes that you like. You know, those, those are those are dope, though. Yeah, they they are. I mean, like that. I'm still kind of up in the air of how it's gonna be or how it's gonna go. I do think people are gonna want them just because it's basically a green shattered backboard. The quality, the quality is great. On it. You know, the Saint Your Brothers Air Jordan One Mid. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's 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 gonna be interesting to see. But uh, I don't know. It's kind of like a gift and a curse. It's kind of like the social media and the YouTube. It's informative because, you know, back in our day, you just had magazines and, you know, you, you just had Nike Talk and ISS or now Soul Collector. But That's all you had. To an extent, I think it was, it was a little bit better. Because it was a little you more actually, pure. You had to go to the store to actually see a shoe to understand and appreciate a shoe. Yeah. You had to review pure. it yourself. You had to go in, pick it up for yourself, look at it and say, I like this shoe. And then go home and go outside and tell your friends, this is a, this is a dope shoe. Yeah. You know. So it was more a word of mouth and seeing it for yourself and forming your own opinion on it opposed to getting that opinion off social media. So. Okay. That was uh, That's what I liked about it. Yeah. Okay. Um... All right, well, we'll go into our, our main topic. <sighs> Are phone posits dead? Are they dead? Absolutely not. Or I hope not. What I will say is I'm really not liking the phone posits that are dropping now, lately. I'm not really feeling them too much. But I love phone posits. So I'm hoping that they're not dead. Now, why aren't you liking them? I'm not really liking the colorways that are coming out as much as I used to. I'm more of an OG general color type person. I mean, I like, you know, a few a few of the colors that have come out over the last few years. I, I like, I'm into, and I have. But a lot of them are just not desirable colorways. It's like... It's too much going on on them. Okay. I do, I'll, I'll always feel like with, with phone posits, certain colors look good as a pro, certain colors look better in the phone one. But okay. I really feel like, and don't get mad at me saying this, you're going to give me <laughs> you, your patented stare down, you, you but they need to vault phone posits like they did the Jordan 3s. I agree. They need to vault them and not come out with them for maybe two or three years just to give people a, a break. Because they're starting to whore out a shoe that you can't whore out. I feel like the phone posit has made it to that echelon 
or maybe it's a, a little bit underneath, but you can't whore out an Air Max one or a Jordan one. Well, that's a whole nother conversation, but it's certain shoes they're always gonna come out with. They're always gonna come out with those four Air Maxes. One, 90, 95, 97. Mm -hmm. um, they're always gonna have Bo Jacksons. Um, they're always going to bring back Air Force Ones, Blazers, Dunks. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Certain iconic Nikes that they've done so much to them and they've been out so much that it's a part of their framework where it can't be hoarded out. I mean, they've slowed down on foam posits, which is a good thing. I believe it's a good thing because, like I said, it was too many unnecessary colors that were coming out because I feel like at the, at the point where you have enough foam posits to come out that are sitting because you're making that decision, do I want to spend $150 on this one or next month this one, mm -hmm. then you're having too many. So if it, maybe not a couple years, but maybe <laughs> two a year would be cool. Not 10 pair a year or five pair a year. You know what? Make it more desirable. They should come out with them quarterly. I could live with that. So it's just four. Yeah, that would be good. Just four. You know, um, I do think that they, they could get back into the reissuing of some of the, you know, they've already brought out the blue one. Original 97, 08, 2011, and last year. Mm -hmm. So it's come out four or five times. Mm -hmm. um, the Pearl, it's like 02. Um, I know they came out like <coughs> late 2000s. They came out in 2010. And then they came out in the pack in 2015. Certain things like that. They need to stick with, but all this metallic y shit, those green ones with the like, and then it, it makes you wonder what they're trying to market the phone posit towards because it's not really for us anymore. Those solid colors are for us. I agree. I think, but I think that was the whole point. It was to market to a different, a different group of people who were never into phone posits who are probably into phone posits now because they came up with the crazy colors and the the prints on them and those type of things. I think that did bring the value of a phone posit up to an extent, but then it was too many. So now I would love it. I'm with you with that because I would love for some of the original colorways to come out again. And, and the quarterly would be great for me. If it was one a quarter, I would, I could appreciate that more because everybody's not going to get it. Everybody wouldn't go after it because you're going to go after what you want and not just because it's a phone positive that's coming out. Because I think at one point that people were just buying phone positives just because they were phone positives. True. But I, 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 I never understood at 250 why are you buying a shoe that you really didn't want anyway? You got to be choosy with it, you know, a shoe at that price point, in my opinion. And, and I, I do feel like th th this is just my opinion. The price point helps the shoe but it hurts the shoe at the same time it's kind of like with the lebrons same thing like it's a good shoe it's got all this tech in it this is why it's that yeah that's where you're paying for it but i still feel like if foams were just 200 dollars, which is still a lot of money it's not as much as it was but you know i feel like that that point that price point would be good if they came down off it sort of like how they did with the jordans where the nike airs were all 220 now they're just 200 I agree, but I think the Jordans are too much. Oh, they definitely are. That's a whole other. Uh... You know, I, I feel like Nike will do anything as long as us as consumers, oh, as long as we're, still, we're we'll, as long as we'll pay for it, they'll continue to raise the price on it. If we didn't buy it, they would have no choice but to dry, drop the price on it. But I agree with you. It two hundred would be a great price point on a phone posit. I think that two fifty is a great price point on a Jordan. 150. 150. 154, 154 Jordan, 200 for a phone posit. I do understand that you're paying for the technology that you're getting in the shoe. And I understand that a phone, phone posit is not a cheap, cheap shoe mm -hmm. to, to even make. So I get that. But that's a lot to me. Okay. Now, we basically focused this convo so far on the phone posit 1 and Pro. Do you have any affinities for any other phone posit shoes? The I don't. Flight posit, the and I don't. Phone Max. Duncan. It's not that I don't like those shoes, um, and I wish I knew his name, but it's a guy that I actually, from, uh, he's a YouTuber, and I went, he's like, 
he has phone posits, all phone posits, okay. like every style of phone posit, and it's like colors that I've never seen. I never even knew they made these colors, but he has a ton of every kind of phone posit, and I respect it because I'm a you know I'm a phone head, but they're too heavy for me personally. Like phone the posit posit is light. Phone posits are heavy to, it's, and it's bulky. Okay. They're bulky and heavy enough for me, the ones and pros, that I don't want to go towards the, the other ones. But I do like them. I got you. Just not to purchase for myself. But as far as I love them. I got you. See, to me, other than the, the Foam 1 Pro, you know, I love the Duncans. I, I'm heartbroken that my silver pair from 98 finally gave out on me last summer. <laughs> I don't have a, a retro pair because when they, they came out in 12, they were like 225 It was so much money. Um, I couldn't justify it at the time. But um, the flight posit, they brought it back, but they haven't really brought it back OG other than 2008. They'll come out with it. I remember when I was at Next, we had it in copper. Um, we had an all-black one that looked like carbon fiber. There was a Nyx one, and there are some colors out now. I think there's an all-blue one out now. To me, that's the shoe that they could get a lot out of because it's real sleek. It will go with today's fashion. You know, um, I think what hurts it is it's not attached to a player like Major how player, yeah. the, the Foam Max is attached to Duncan and David Robinson mm-hmm. and how the Foam 1 and Pro are attached to Penny. Mm-hmm. Um but I, I do think it deserves a shot. They retroed the Flight Posit 2, and, you know, that was KG's shoe. Didn't really do anything. Um, but, again, this was before people were wanting stuff to be sleek and stuff mm-hmm. now, so I think that that might work now. Do um, you remember the Flight Posit 3 with the two straps? I they had bug eyes on the side. I don't. Yeah. That was also KG, but that was when he left and went to uh, and one. So, okay. Then they had another positive shoe after called the Ultra Positive that would not sell if it was retro. Though it's people out there that want it, but uh, the Foam One and Pro is still the the best. But I'd like to see them venture off and try to revisit some of these other shoes to try to preserve some of the legacy left. Foam Positive. Yeah, I would love to see it. I would. I would love. Like I said, I I like them. As far as style, there's a lot of shoes. You know, we talk about that all the time. It's, it's tons of shoes that I like. Mm-hmm. I like the look of. I just personally wouldn't buy it, mm-hmm. but I love it. And I know, you know, a lot of these shoes would sell. Like, I feel that way about the Shocks BB4, the first Vince Carter. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, when he jumped over, you know, Frederick mm-hmm. Weiss. They've retroed it, you know, and it's kind of sad because it, it looks like 2000, 2001. But, um, and I, I love it. I have OG pairs, but I never bought any of the retros. And probably wouldn't unless I could find them for really cheap. So I uh, love, I think that uh, just whoever's marketing for these different shoes, Yeah. I would love it if they would just kind of look into the fashion and where the fashion's going and just rock with it. So now that the 90s, type theme is coming back mm-hmm. bring some of those 90 shoes back and because yeah. I think that they would do well because of the fashion and see I also feel that for shoes when you bring it back OG you know we're paying all this money for it you should go all out give me the OG box and give me some sort of retro card mm-hmm. that agree. talks about the shoe for the OG colors you bring back I that agree. phone posit and neon blue I need a picture of Penny in there, him wearing the shoe, dunking in it, a little write-up about it, talk about how it was supposed to be for Pippin. Hey, I, was, I, was, I, tell, I was telling Dave, I'm like, I wish that Penny's came with the with the pictures on them like Jordan's did mm-hmm. back in the day where I could see all the OG colorways the year they came out. Yeah. That'd be dope. That, they could do it for Barkley, they could do it for Pippin, you know, and, and, and just revisit the entire legacy to where... With a lot of these guys, they'll have shoes that we know them as their shoes, but it won't have their name on it. You know, like the more up tempo, that's the Pippin. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows it as a Pippin, but it doesn't have his name on it. Yeah. You know, they need to revisit that whole thing, and they can do it. You know, 
Especially for the price. For what yeah. we're paying for them or what you're asking for them, definitely. Give me give me something. And maybe you don't give it on the GS, but give it give it to the, the men's pairs. People buying this shoe where if they come out with the Orlando Penny one, I want a picture of him and Lil Penny in there. You know, there were posters for all of these shoes back in the day. So put that poster on the card, have a little write up on the back with all the shoes. It's not hard. I agree. So I feel like with the with the OG phones, if they do that, they should they should do that. And it's only a couple colors, like uh, I remember the the blue, the the pearl was an OG color. They had an mm-hmm. all black one that was a pro, but it had clear bottom. And I think that was it. I know in '98, Foot Action had a bunch of colors only they had. Like, have you ever seen the the Voltage phone? Mm-hmm. That all black with the lime green yeah. swoosh. Like, you have a pair of those desktop, like seven, eight hundred dollars. And I, I wish that they would go back to that as well. Like, I wish that they would give certain stores certain colorways and other stores uh, another colorway. That way, yeah. you know that you can only go here to get this colorway, and you can only go there to get that colorway. I, I love that. And see, I feel like Nike hasn't really. They do it with with uh, finish line sort of now. But they used to really take care of foot action before Foot Locker bought foot action. Because mm-hmm. I was fortunate to work for them before that happened. Because I'm like, man, we're the only ones with these dunks, or we're the only ones with these Air Max 2003s, or whatever we had. You know what I mean? Like, we were the only ones with them. So they, they should get back to that. And I feel like they do that with the Air Maxes, but not with other shoes. I loved it. I love knowing that you can, you know, that you had to go to a certain store to get that shoe. I loved it. I mean, it was just part of the part of what you did, uh, you know, as a sneaker. And, yeah. and, and, you know, you knew what you had to do. And it was, I got, you, you get with your fellow sneakerheads and you go shop. You get what you want, what you need, you know, what shop. you want at that time. I loved it. Look, I got one for you. I think you could only get them at finish line, but they brought it back since. But they had this all yellow Iverson, the question. It was all yellow with a navy blue toe. I I've always have wanted those, and I've never been able to find them. Those. You know, they, they brought them back two, three years ago, and I still wasn't able to find them. But I know back in the day, they came out somewhere between 99 and 01, and you could only get them at the finish line. So, yeah. But I think that, you know, they should slow it down and just, just try some other stuff. Don't completely kill the phone posit. Everything isn't meant to be like an Air Force One. I agree. You know, because even with the dunk, you know, we've talked about it. I I really feel like Nike stopped coming out with dunks on a regular retail, you know, not SB, but just regular retail to come out with more Jordan 1s. Because they can get more money for essentially the same shoe. But everything can't be a dunk or a Jordan 1 or Air Force 1. So that's why with the phone posit. I know you say don't vault it or just come out with it quarterly. Quarterly is cool, but... If you're not going to do that, just vault it. Just vault it. All right. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> um, so my, I guess our last topic, what are you looking forward to the next couple of months, shoe-wise? Nothing. Nothing. The only thing that I need it's shit that I'm waiting for to go on sale, but that shit doesn't really <clears throat> count. Like those up tempo threes, or now they're the up tempo ninety seven. When those go on sale, the two seventy Air Force two seventy. Um, the only shoe I really want right now that I don't have that's in stores now is uh, the the orange. Just do it, Air Max one. Finish line has them. I want those. Yeah, I still need those. And Nike brought back the Air Max ninety four. Not the one I said that I would kill someone over, but the other ones. <laughs> I don't know if I told you about yes, that. Yes, you did. And yeah. I'm glad that those are not. Yeah. The, the Air Max 294. Nobody's going to buy it. Well, I ain't even going to say that. I'm so serious about the Air Max 294 coming out that I would just not buy another shoe for as long as I could until I could find every 12 or 11 and a half I could get. I have to have at least seven or eight of these because wow. I've been wanting them that long. Wow. You know, that's that's the holy grail. I've owned it, but it's cracked. I need I need that. 
understandable. Um, but yeah, the regular Air Max 94, it looks just like the Air Burst. It's in stores now. And uh, those just do what Air Max wants. That's it. Everything else is just shit I'm waiting for to go on sale. The, the Force Max B, the, the 93 Barkley, that's still, it's around 90 now, but once it gets to around 60, then I'll buy it. The Air Force 180, the 76ers color, even though I have the 05 and 13 release, I still need a brand new pair of them. That's one of them where anytime it comes out, I'm going to buy it. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. They're black, blue, red, white, the old Barkley. I need that on sale for around 50 bucks. It's a couple. Yeah, it's nothing. I mean, I'm just at the point where I told you I feel like I have way too many shoes no such that thing. I stopped. It's, it's, it's a couple of things that catch my eye that, you know, I go, I, I'll, I'll get, but it's really nothing. I, now, if I catch a couple of things on sale, I will definitely go after them. But nothing that I have to have as of right now. I don't feel like it's anything that I have to have. Uh, like I need those. And then it's tough for me with running shoes since they're what everybody's buying now. Normally, I, you know. The weight out where I'm like, well, mm -hmm. these are 120 now, but they'll be 90 in two months or whatever. But running shoes, you just don't know. And I really feel like in 11 and a half and 12, they make less of them than they do 11 and down. So it's kind of like I can't even wait anymore. It's like, nigga, if you want this, you better get it now. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll find it online, but you're going to pay more for it. So what you going to do? So I have these... Uh, inner conversations with myself when I'm looking at certain shoes. Basketball shoes, you know, uh, regular Nike retros that aren't Jordans or some phone posits, I know they're going to sit. You know, the last couple of years I've been pretty accurate. The only shoe that sold out that I should have got was the black and white of Tempo because I didn't think we were going to sell out of it. Because mm. we had just had the, the black and gray Zoom Flight 95 to Jason Kidd with the big bug eyes on the side. Mm -hmm. Didn't do anything. Except, yeah. You know, and I love that shoe, but I didn't buy it. I'm like, I can't pay $140 for these. I'm never going to wear them. I'm just getting them because of what they are because I had them before. Because I have an OG pair, but they're yellowed as fuck. They're probably going to separate if I put my foot in them. So, you know. I don't understand. I'm waiting. I don't know what stands. Shadow? Honestly, yes. Yeah, I think a nigga bought the 12 or the 11 and a half the other day. It's not like they can't be located, but... I'm yeah, still waiting on if, th if those get to be... Because they're, they're around 150 with our... If I could get them for like 100... And I've seen them at Play-Dohs a couple of times, but they've been just too small. Like, they had an 11 or... It was a, a 10 and a half, and they were like $55. And they were like new. They were just, just too small. Mm -hmm. If they would have been an 11, I would have bought them. So that's the other thing that affects my shoe buying, especially with Jordans. Jordans are like a dime a dozen. Between Avalon and Plato's Closet, somebody's going to turn them in. Somebody bought them and shouldn't have and they either got a bill or they were stolen and somebody sold them. You know, something. Yeah. So, that kind of changes everything to the resale shops. So, nothing for you. Those two Air Maxes for me. Um, I did go thrifting yesterday and the thrift gods shined on me. <laughs> Nothing great, but some really good. The best thing I found yesterday was I found the United We Rise Hyper Dunk, the first Hyper Dunk Kobe wore when they won the gold medal in 2008 when they, the Redeem team. You gotta show me. The, the very first, I'll show it to you. Uh, they're just, they're off white with lasering all over them. The swoosh is red with blue outlining. Um, I found a pair of those at Avalon and Lakewood. And they were $60 with the box and the paper. And they couldn't have been worn more than twice. Okay. So they were like new. Because when they came out, they came out for the Olympics 2016, Nike made them 160 When they came out in 08, they were only 110 So, <laughs> now again, this Hyperdunk OG, it says on the box. But I've still got old pairs, like my all-black Hyperdunk from 08, 110 But anyway, it's the shoe. Uh, remember he jumped over the car in them? You're supposed to be a Kobe fan, Christine. I, I am. I nah, I feel it. I don't remember. I feel it. But, yeah, I'll, I'll show them to you after we finish recording. Um, so I found those. Um, 
I found some KD7 clear waters at the Goodwill. They were $15. The bubble was a, a little foggy. The shoe was a little dirty, but the Jason Mark made them respectable where I could wear them here. I almost wore them today, but I wore a blue shoe yesterday. I wore them all Gary Payton's, so it was too similar. Um, yeah, so the, <laughs> the other shoe, which was probably the Kobe's I was really happy about because I wanted them since I ate. And when they came out, I'm pretty sure they didn't come out here. I don't even think the LeBron 6 United We Rise came out here. But I found some Air Force Ones from 1993. They're just blue with a white swoosh and a, you know, white midsole, blue bottom. But the leather on them was just so good. Like, the leather on them. Because I looked at them, and I'm like, because they were dirty as fuck. Like, dirty as fuck. But once I, I hit them with the Jason Mark, and all of the dirt came off, the midsole is oxidized. So it's it's uh, kind of an, an off-white, or what Nike will call sale now but <laughs> but um they they're in really good shape to be 25 years old they still have most of the stars you know right here um <clears throat> they were just dirty as fuck and they needed to be stuffed so you know because i was looking at the tongue and the tongue said nike air but it didn't look like an air force one from like now and i looked at it and then i looked at the tag and it was like 930204 which means it was made 93 from february to mm -hmm. april so that means they probably came out like around June because that was when Nike first started trying to bring back the Air Force One. It was in the early 90s. I was happy to find them. They were only $8. Wow. So So you got to steal them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that Savers on Lakeshore, I always find vintage shit there. I found my um, Nike team conventions. This is a shoe from 1985. They look like a big Nike or a Jordan 1 or a Dunk. I found those there some flights from like 93 like they always have been and shit there so that's what I go thrifting for trying to find shit like that yeah. feed into your addiction you know cause the last time I was there I found uh, Isaac's uh, fighter jets okay I mean at the bottom was yellow as fuck but I was still able to disinfect them switch out the insole and uh just clean them off a little bit and, you know he wore them cause he's been wanting some phone posits but with him being 10 years old I can't pay mm -hmm. that kind of money for him just to, you know, grow out of it. So, they were fifteen ninety nine. It worked out. Which ones? The fighter jets. Fighter jets. Yeah. That's why I wore those camel ones that day. Mm -hmm. We both wore a camel foam. So, you know. Well, you found them for fifteen. They were fifteen ninety nine at Savers. Wow. On Lakeshore. And what size is he wearing? A nine. That's what's huge. Yeah, like, if I could just thrift and keep stuff for myself and sell stuff, that's all I do. Yeah, because you like the thrill of the shopping. Yeah, because it's not even about having the shoe. It's what I got it for. Mm -hmm. That's why it's hard for me just to go into a store and pay 150 or $200 for a shoe. And I'll be like, I got the shoe now. Now what? It's like, nigga, I found this shoe for this or mm -hmm. this old ass shoe here or and I only got them for $50, you know, like mm -hmm. that, so. Because, again, Plato's Closet and Avalon Exchange has spoiled me to the fact of, well, if it's an Air Max or something and it's not limited, they may get it. And they may not, but, you know. So, that thrill of finding something, you know, and then... Uh, sitting there cleaning it you know disinfecting it making it my own I found a Carhartt coat I've always wanted one of those <laughs> it was $25 but I'm looking at how much I would have paid for if I found it at Goldfish or you know what I mean any place like that so um, you know and I'm a sucker for cartoon t-shirts and uh, band t-shirts the physical musical artists I listen to, I have to get it. So, yesterday was pretty good on the thrift side. I, I shot a video for it, but it was so long, I had to speed up like the speed of the videos, and I sound like the dude from the old Micro Machines commercials from 
talking all fast. <laughs> but it was so I could do it because if you, you upload a video from YouTube, it's they only give you 15 minutes. Okay. And if I did my video the right way, as I, it was shot of in like 20 minutes. So now one spot. You ever been to 29.99 shoe shoe store? No. I know where it is, but I've never been in there. Because there used to be one on Northfield, but it's closed. But the 55th. one on 55th is still there. I, I went there yesterday. They had a couple of random Pumas. Um, they had these Fila's I haven't seen since the early 90s called the M-Force that I thought about buying. But all they had was all white. But, yeah. Shit like that offsets wearing Jordans and other Nike shoes everybody wears. They had a bunch of VW, GH, Pumas. You know, that's a Paris collab, so. All $29.99. They had a bunch of Ewings. <laughs> but they weren't like... They had a couple of OGs. Like, they had the ones he wore on the Dream Team. They had them, but for some of that kind of shit, they were trying to charge $39.99 for it. Mm. Man, make it regular, you know. But when we used to live down on East 65th, I used to always be in that bitch. I found my Insta Pump Reeboks in there. I found a bunch of stuff. I need random shit like that. Mm -hmm. I have to have it. You gotta have different types of stuff in your shoe collection. You know, it's like, ooh, what the fuck are those? <laughs> I mean, you just kind of look like, yeah, nigga. <laughs> you don't know about this. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we got a, a couple minutes left. Anything else you want to talk about? Nope. Nothing that I can think of. Oh, you know what? I got I got some. Why is Verace your favorite shoe? Everybody wears that. Why, why is that well, your favorite shoe? It's just my favorite shoe for the summer. I mean, it was just something that I started picking up. Really, I mean, I had a few, you know, a few pair of Verace's, but they're so comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I worked so much in the summertime that I just looked for a comfortable shoe. And it, it was like, you know, some decent colorways coming out over the summer. So I just gravitated towards those this summer. So I've been wearing them quite a bit. I regret not buying those and letting Philip buy them. I should have bought those. I'm still trying to break them in. Because they're stiff further than the rest of them because of this material. But I love yeah. them. They're very comfortable. Like, I have a couple of... I don't have any drifts, but I have a couple other Hirachi offshoots. Like, I have the Hirachi Utility. You familiar with that one? I have one. Okay. I have one. And I have uh, the Hirachi NM. You familiar with them? No. The ones with the ropes on them? No. Okay. They came out like 2015. But all of the good colors only came out in Europe. Like they had an all white one, a red, all red one. Those only came out in, in Europe. The pair I have is a teal purple with a white bottom. Um, they kind of have a free kind of looking bottom. They sort of remind me of, you remember how they brought back the Hirachis in 2012? They brought back the flight Hirachi and that Hirachi, but they put a free bottom on them. I need to see them. Yeah. Sort of like that, but it's better looking. Uh, the Hirachi Utility that I have, we had them at Next, but in the pair I have, we had it Next. It's Safari is like gray, purple, and Volt, but they were uh, a good will find. Okay. So I only paid like $15 for them. I wasn't going to buy them, but for that price, I just couldn't leave them there. And they were clean, so I have a Jessen's shirt that goes with them. Do you like Origins? Yeah. I mean, I have a pair of those from uh, 2003. They're white. They're like the old way. They're white, navy, and yellow. Like kind of look Michigan colors, but they're mostly white. I have uh, the all black ones. I have the white ones, but they're white with the gum bottom and the ostrich skin. Mm -hmm. And I have an all olive green pair with a gray bottom from last year that were special. They say SC special edition on the box. I don't know. I almost wore them to death try to impress you, but I didn't feel like reaching for them. They're just comfortable. I mean, for me, it's pretty much the comfortability and for the price. You get They're a cheap. comfortable, yeah. You're getting a cheap, comfortable shoe, and that's pretty much um, 
why I'm really into them. Yeah, I, I really wish that. Um... You're horning them up. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it's it's another one of those shoes that, like we were talking about earlier, like the um, the Air Maxes, where they've done so much to it and retroed it so many times that it can't be ordered. Yep. Because I really would like those ones with the astronaut on them. But then if I get them, I'd have to get the Air Force One, too. I'm waiting for those to go. Have they went down yet? They, no, they're still regular price. And we got more of them because we had almost sold out of them. We got more of them. So, you know. Yeah, it's a couple couple more pairs that I want to get. Uh, but I, I refuse to buy them until they go on sale because we have so... Harachis are... It's so many that they have to go on sale at some point. Yes. Yeah, so so many colors. So, see with the regular all whites, I knew that I either was never gonna wear them and or fuck them up. So that's why when I was able to come across that leather white pair with the ostrich, I just went there, you know. And I haven't worn them, but twice I wore them for our first engagement pictures because we had we all had on white shoes and yellow tops. So, oh, I need Nike to come out with more Air Max 98s. Even though that pair I wore on Saturday kind of hurt my feet because they're an 11 instead of an 11 and a half or a 12, I need more of those. That's an underrated Air Max. They cost a lot. You know, 160 is a lot, but to me, they're better than the 97. That's just me. <laughs> that face okay. you made. Right. They're, they're better than the 97. That's cool. The only 97 that matters is the silver one. And to a lesser extent, the gold one. You can have all of them. Groups. Oh, those women's ones? That's a women's one. It doesn't even count. It counts. You can't say that. It counts. You know. Not by those. Just like, you know, if they ever come out with a grape 95 for, for men. Yeah. Like, again, if we had them here, that's one of them. I'd have paid $160 for them just because I love that shoe that much. But it's rare. So... I don't know. Y'all get some of the best colorways. Then y'all don't even be copping the girls' colors. I can't feel them. They hurt. They're too narrow. Can't wear too many women's shoes. They, I have to buy them. I have to size up on them to get the room in. And, and then sizing up make them look so long. So I kind of stay away from them. I try to. Do you have any? <laughs> I, I really if ever buy a woman's shoe. Uh, the Air Max 1s. I definitely we're going to buy the white and blue and gray. Oh, that one we uh, sold out of. Yes, I wanted that. I would have, I would have upsized on that one a little bit to get that one. Can always locate it. I think I want to, cause I, I actually like that shoe. It's just then it's on sale. If it wasn't on sale, I wouldn't care about it. But it's a good buy for the price. Yeah, I like love the colorway. I got you. Well, um, I'm getting a notification that we're about to run out of time. So tell everybody who you are one more time. Yeah, I'm Chris Estrin. That's your Instagram name? That's my Instagram name is I Go Hard. I Go Hard. <laughs> and as always, I'm Shorty C94. Definitely appreciate you all for listening. The shows coming up are going to have a little more structure and not be all over the place. So we will see y'all soon. You all be blessed. Take care. Peace.